Hey guys, welcome to another episode of How to Play Warframe. Even though I haven't called any of the other episodes that, no biggie. Today, we are going to go over the mission type interception. Now, a little bit of disclaimer here. I'm going to just do this solo so I may not pass it. I'm just trying to explain the stage. So just be aware of that. An interception mission is definitely a mode that is best played with more people than less people. If you can get a full party of four, you should do a full party of four. With that out of the way, what is an interception mission? An interception mission is sort of like Warframe King of the Hill. Except you have to hold the hill points in order to actually complete the objective. So it's kind of like a tug and war as this King of the Hill match is going on between you and enemy forces. You will see in the top left corner a bar for the Tenno and a bar for the opponent. You will see in the map that there is all sorts of symbols A through D. What this amounts to is each of the letters is one of the aforementioned hills. Go to one of those points, stand in it to capture it, and when you capture it, it will start earning you points in that bar. Now since they all start controlled by the enemies, they have a little bit of an advantage on you. Beyond that, if you're trying to capture a point and an enemy is within the area of that capturable point, it will actually stop you from making any progress on capturing that point. Also different, as that enemy right there was just trying to do, to capture a point, an enemy need only touch a panel and use a panel. As soon as he activates that panel, that's all it takes. They have control of that node. The enemy have taken a tower. You must this makes things kind of difficult for a single player because as a single player you can't be in all places at once. So as I'm capturing A here, they might take back one of the other ones. As you can notice down there, all of a sudden now they have that one. Now this isn't a big deal if you get ahead of the other team. So if I manage to take the lead in our bars up there, you can see right now I'm at 21, a little bit faster than they are. If I stay in control of at least two nodes while I'm ahead of them, I have a good chance of pulling this off. If they take any nodes back and I no longer have control of at least those two nodes, chances are they are going to win. Because of course for each node you get you gain points quicker. So the more points you have the better it's going to be as for you actually winning. If they have more points, they gain points faster. Pretty straightforward for the most part, I like to think. This is just further complicated right now by the enemy hit team that's invaded me. Now, as stated, enemies just have to interface with one of two panels surrounding each of the points in order to take it over. This means that it's a lot easier for them to take it over. Thankfully, Every time one of the enemies goes over and starts interfacing with one of those terminals, it will play a warning klaxon to let you know that one of your points is about to be taken. As long as you keep enemies off of those terminals, you can keep gathering points whereas the enemy can't take it. On the other end, if they do take it from you, 
then you have to actually kill all the enemies in that area and stand there long enough for it to be captured by you. I would kind of prefer if the enemies had to take it over the same way as you, although I can perfectly understand why it's not that way. But, you know, I digress. It is how it is. So ideally you would want at least two people here to give you a little leeway. One person can take one point, the other person can take another point. If you're feeling really antsy or you've got a good bead on the stage, like in the case of this one here, I can see well over to those two points over there. So if there's an enemy getting ready to capture it, I can take them down before it's actually taken control of by them. So... In this instance, since I'm alone, it's almost advantageous for me to keep an eye on this while I still have a little bit of the lead. If the enemy happens to take either of my points, I will be in some deep trouble. What I will do is try to capture this point real quick, just to try to edge out my points a little bit further above theirs. As you can see, they're already trying to take up there, and there's not a whole lot I can really do about that. They have that power, so now they will probably actually end up taking the lead into points, which is bad news for me if I actually want to win this stage. I am still a little bit ahead in points though, so I'm going to take a chance to come over here and try to capture this. Try to get my lead up a little bit more. Now the setup of this is a lot like a defense mission, wherein you protect the points for however long it takes for you to actually achieve the mission to end. Either the bad guys win, you lose, and you have to leave the mission as a failure, or you fill up your bar to 100% before the enemies and you win, then giving you the option to either leave or continue on to the next wave with more difficult bad guys. When you hit 100%, you get this little mini excavation battle, which is a nice little touch because it gives you the chance to run around and pick things up that you might not have picked up while you were defending these points from getting captured. Defense could really benefit from this, but it probably won't happen because of the differences of the game modes. There's plenty of reasons why people wouldn't want to do these missions, namely the fact that it is incredibly hard to do by yourself, at least if you're at the same playing level that I am playing at, which I'm not going to make any false claims of being the best Warframe player in existence here. Uh, right here you will see the extract or battle. I'm going to leave so I can focus on talking about things instead of just failing the mission and embarrassing myself more than I need to. Now, in the higher level stages, interceptions become, at the moment, profitable because they're some of the only places that will reward tier 4 void keys. And of course, tier 4 void keys are necessary in order to get some of the T4 gear, like the different prime items that can only possibly drop from those specific T4 areas what drops is still kind of randomized, but a lot of times that's what the main hype behind something like an interception mission is. Uh, it's nice because being the only place you can get those keys, where else are you going to go to get it? It stinks because it's definitely not a solo friendly thing. Some people are probably way better than me and they can solo these things till they're blue in the teeth, but in my case I'm not. and. If I had to guess, I would 
and I put myself at like the average level of the majority of players where some are better and some are worse, then that means a lot of people will maybe get to that first set and then have to be like, okay, that's it, that's all I can do. Uh, different frames kind of come with different benefits depending on the stage. Uh, Zephyr is particularly handy for earth-based interception because she can navigate around very quickly or I guess in a way any interception she would come in handy in that sense because she can quickly get from one point to the other to try to defend it. A Vauban can be quite handy because he can lock down a point even if he's not necessarily at it uh, with a couple of range mods in his ultimate move it will actually reach for the most part across an area that if they're trying to interface with either of the two panels they will end up getting sucked into the ball of doom and not being able to do anything and if they can't do anything they can't take the points which means it's a little easier to get to that point where you're at 100 percent and then you can just go and mop up the enemies without having to worry about fighting over points likewise his bastille move can stop some dudes from going in although there's a hard cap on how many some other frames that could come in handy. I mean, a Nyx can cause chaos, which is generally a nice thing because it might have the bad guys fighting each other instead of going after the point. Although I haven't personally used her in that instance. And if, a, if it's anything like the defense mission, some of the bad guys might decide that the objectives are still more important than fighting each other. So it's kind of a give or take. A Nova isn't bad as the Molecular Prime can slow enemies down. And if they're slowed down, it's going to take them longer to get to things. Since they are also primed by Molecular Prime, if you do happen to kill some, it can actually chain reaction and kill a bunch of dudes, keeping them away from the different objectives. Oberon could possibly come in handy because he can drop his field effect or also pick up a bunch of dudes and slam them down to kind of give it that little bit of leeway. Although, at that point, it's more of a around a specific hill as compared to Vauban, who could be standing at a different hill and be raining down his moves on a separate one to kind of prevent it, giving him the capabilities of watching two places at once more easily. Uh, like I said, Nyx could do the chaos, which might be handy. Uh, Mag Prime does have the crush move, which would pick up a bunch of dudes and squish them. So, I mean, it kind of same thing as Oberon there, where it helps protect the one zone a little nicer, but it doesn't necessarily branch out into helping out in other zones. Loki could try using a decoy, although I'm not necessarily positive that decoy will actually distract enemies from taking the interception points over the decoy. He could also use radio disarm so that nobody's shooting at you, but they can still and probably will go after the points, which, regardless of whether they have guns or not, so that's kind of debatable on how much that would work. Uh, Hydroid, kind of similar in use, I would imagine, as the Vauban, in that you could tell him to use his power in a far-off area, and it would rain down shells and possibly knock people over, kind of preventing them from getting to the objective and using it and taking over a node. Otherwise, he could use his tentacle swarm to kind of slap people around, or even just turn into a puddle. Although, both of the later ones are more of a single node kind of defensive tactic as opposed to a wide range one uh, Frost you would think that it would be handy to have the dome and in some ways it could be as long as somebody is going to stay within it because if you put a dome down in the center then of course it's stopping you from taking hits so you can more easily focus on making sure nobody's taking the points by shooting at them without worrying about taking hits but it's not necessarily really doing much to protect the actual 
interfaces that the enemies use to take the points back. So it's, even if you dropped it on there, I mean, it would be nice because the enemies will be slowed down when they're in the snow globe, but the fact that you can't shoot at them if you're outside of the globe is going to kind of hinder protecting those points because if you're outside of the globe and you see some bad guy inside of a globe getting ready to interface with one of the things, there's not a lot you can do about killing him to stop him from taking the point. A lot of the characters have those wide-reaching ultimate moves. Volt can do his large area electric attack. Rhino has his stomp. So, I mean, everybody has a little bit of something they could actually add to the mission. And the nice part about it is if you have four people, it doesn't really matter what they are as long as they can survive and stop people from taking those notes. So it doesn't really matter what you use if you're in a team and you're working together as a team. Although at that point, it is more of an issue of how good you are with a given frame. If you were playing a Limbo, for example, it's not that you can do it, it'll work. But if you're not very good with Limbo and you're constantly going down, then you're drawing all of your teammates away from protecting one of the hills to keep picking you up. And if you're drawing them away from the hills, you're not getting to that 100% faster than the enemies necessarily, or as fast as possible, and, you know, the idealistic point. Whereas if you're great with a limbo, you could be doing all kinds of stuff that would be proving handy, like having your barrier that people can't shoot into, although you can't shoot out, or possibly just kind of rifting back and forth the areas, or drawing attention from bad guys by being in a rift world where they can't hit you and stuff like that. I mean, there's... All the normal possibilities you could do in a match still exist. You just have to remember that you need to hold more points than the enemy until your bar is further along than theirs. And then you have to hold at least as many as the enemy. So when you start, you're going to need to get three points minimum in order to be able to take the lead. At that point, you only really need to hold two points in order to stay in the lead. But the more you have, the quicker it'll end, and the less enemies you're going to have to be fighting for that consistent period of time before the round ends. So any frame will work. Some will help out a little bit better than others. But they all will work. You just have to play as a team in order to get the most out of it. Now, the benefits of those, of course, are those T4 keys, primarily, because... At the moment, with how the Void works, those T4 keys are useful. In the future, they were talking about changing up Void. If they do, then I might have to re-come back and revisit this and go over the benefits a little bit more. But the primary benefits are that. Outside of that, it is a kind of endless wave defense mission with the Capture the Hill element. So you are still fighting a lot of enemies, so there's that potential gain for the affinity possible although it might not be quite as well as a normal defense mission where you could actually have everybody in the same area because since you're trying to get these different points and some of the maps are actually pretty wide so these points are relatively further apart than the one that you just saw so it's it's not a terrible mission it can definitely be difficult with one person because you're trying to maintain a lead on a bunch of bad guys and it's easier, I would argue, for the bad guys to actually take control of a point than it is for the players. Because the player has to get in there, wait for it to count down to zero so that the enemy doesn't own it, and then wait for it to count back up to 100% so that they own it. And any bad guys that step in the zone at that point will stall out the process. Whereas the bad guys nearly just walk up to a console, interface with it for two or three seconds, and then boom, they're done. It's an interesting game mode. It's something different, so it is kind of fun to play in that regard, but it is definitely one of the few modes where it is far more enjoyable with a group of players just because there is that aspect of four different things that kind of need to happen. So, I mean, if you have two players, you can each kind of keep track of two 
or you can get three points or four points at the start and then kind of just focus on the two points one for each player if you have four people I mean there's a little bit more room one person can watch each point you can get two on two it makes it a little bit more of an easier streamlined process with more people of course the harder it gets the stronger the enemies and all that it is going to be more necessary of sorts to bring in other players to help you do these missions because if it took me a full magazine for example to kill those guys I would never have been able to stop them from taking those points right now it's kind of easy because I'm using way powerful stuff compared to the enemies I'm fighting so I make it look easy because I'm killing dudes really quickly that's not always going to be the case so it will actually get harder and harder and harder as the waves progress and as you get to different planets and the harder it gets the more you're going to want other people to be there to make it more feasibly easy or possible even to do just a little something to keep in mind that's essentially how interceptions work uh, it's really just king of the hill for the most part I mean, you're trying to hold the hills longer than the other forces. The main catch is that the other forces start with them. So if you're kind of a fan of King of the Hill mode, you'll probably enjoy it. If you don't like King of the Hill mode, you're not going to enjoy it. Uh, you, you're not really, outside of doing the completion to get to the next nodes and stuff, it's not like you're really forced to do these things. As you can always find other people who have T4 keys and go with them or you can just buy the parts that would drop from the void for real money if you don't want to bother with it at all but that is how interceptions mission work you're there trying to intercept the messages before the bad guys and then after you complete that you have to kill all the bad guys and then decide whether you're going to stay or whether you're going to go there's not much more to it uh, as usual because some people are way better at this game than me and some people know more things or some people just have questions if you have any questions or comments or tips for anybody feel free to leave them in the comments below the video uh, the entire purpose of these things of course is to be tutorials kind of help people out I don't really go into a huge amount of detail because I'm not the best player out there so if you're crazy good or whatever feel free to leave tips for people because the entire point of these videos is to help so if you're going to be helpful with comments, I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Likewise, if you're confused by anything or you have any questions or you want clarification or anything of that sort, feel free to leave a comment below so I can see it. I'll try to address it when I get the chance. Uh, if it's a big thing, I'll make another video on it. In the meantime, until next time, cowboys, keep playing. Oh, where's the button?